Hi, I'm James Ward, a technical evangelist for Flexit Adobe. So I recently had the chance to start playing with some of the new peer-to-peer -peer APIs in Adobe Air. And you can do some really amazing things with these new peer-to-peer -peer APIs. So I want to show you three quick demos of some applications that use the peer-to-peer -peer APIs, and then show you some code so that you can get started building your own applications with peer-to-peer. -peer. So first, let's check out Parlays. Parlays is an application that runs in the web, desktop, and on a mobile device, and provides us uh, a way to watch technical videos from conferences around the world. It's a great application. Uh, let's go in and set up the P2P in this application. First, gonna log in, and now I go to My Parlays, and go to Preferences, and set up my P2P group. So I'm just gonna connect to the Jimmy D peer-to-peer -peer group. And now let me switch over to my mobile device, in this case, the Samsung Galaxy Tab tablet. And so there's the Parlays application in the Android market. Uh, and so let's launch that application here on my tablet. And so what I'm going to do is set up the peer-to-peer -peer network between the tablet application and the desktop application. To do that, I'm going to go into the menu, go into my remote settings, and then connect to that Jimmy D peer-to-peer -peer group. And now we'll see that it's connected to the Parlay's desktop. That's great. Now let's go back and actually start watching a talk. So I'm going to launch this, this talk with Chet Haas and Ramon Guy. And uh, what Parlay's does is it displays the slides and the video for the talk. And so we can watch it here. But let's say I want to stop watching it here and instead watch it on my desktop. What I can do is I can go to the menu and say watch on desktop. And now what it's done it's communicated over P2P with the desktop application, and now it's going to continue this video there on my desktop in the Parlay's desktop application. But I can also now use my, my tablet or mobile device as a remote control for this application. So I can actually skip forward in the, in the video to a specific point in time. Let's go uh, to uh, this part of the talk. And when I do that, you'll see that it jumps the, the scrubber, jumps the video uh, up to that part of the talk. And then I can continue watching the talk from there. Uh, or if I want to skip forward to, to another part, I can go um, up to there. And so, you know, this is great. Now I'm controlling the application uh, from my mobile device. Uh, and using peer-to-peer -to, -peer to communicate between them. So that's great. That's a, a great use case of peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, another use case is, of course, games and being able to play games against people uh, over peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, and so to show this, let me make some room here for my um, Nexus One. So I've created this very simple Pong game uh, that allows me to play Pong between two different devices over peer-to-peer. So let me launch this, this Pong game here. And in my Nexus One, I'm gonna be the left player, and then on my Galaxy Tab, I'm gonna be the right player. And now I can start playing Pong. Um, oops, missed that one. Let's start a new game here. And can play Pong uh, against myself or against other people uh, over peer-to-peer. So, uh, pretty simple game. The, the great thing about this is that it really didn't take very long at all to build this game because of how easy peer-to-peer -peer is in Adobe Air and Flex. Uh, so that's a great uh, use case there for peer-to-peer. -peer. Let me show you one more. So what I've done here uh, is I've, I've thought about you know, more of an enterprise use case. And let me zoom into my um, Nexus One so I can show you this one. And uh, let's resize this a little bit. So in an enterprise application, uh, you, you may want to do some data entry uh, with, uh, while you're meeting with a customer. Let's say you're taking a purchase order, you're with the customer, but you need to get their signature. And so what I've done is I've created uh, this desktop application where I'm going to do this data entry. Uh, so let's launch that application here. And so I'm going to do some data entry, collect some information about this purchase order, uh, and, but I need to capture their signature as well. And so let me now launch the mobile application that will allow us to do the signature uh, entry into this application. So here I am. Uh, let's go create the new purchase order. Let's put in all the purchase order information, uh, the customer name, uh, all the order information could be inputted as well. And now uh, over, I'm going to pull up um, this application on my phone and ask the customer now to, to sign 
uh, the, this purchase order essentially. So now using touch input, they then do this, their signature there on the touch device and using peer-to-peer, -peer, we're sending that information uh, over the, the network. And now I can save this information. We save it all up to the server and record this, the, the purchase order information as well as the, the captured signature. So I thought this was a pretty interesting use case for using peer-to-peer -peer in more of an enterprise application. Let's take a look at some of the source code so you can get an idea for how I actually built this application. So kind of the, the core of the peer-to-peer -peer communication in this application is this P2 Hancock bus. I named it after John Can Hancock and his famous signature. Um, so let's take a look at what happens here. First, uh, I have that group ID similar to what was used in the Parlay's application. In this case, I'm just uh, hard coding that. I set up a net connection uh, and, and connect to RTM FP colon. That allows me to do the peer-to-peer -peer connect, uh, peer -peer connection just on uh, the local network. And then once the, the net connection is connected, I connect uh, to the group, uh, use this new net group API. Uh, and this allows me to really communicate peer-to-peer uh, -to, -peer to other devices on my network. Uh, so very simple API there. And then last thing is that when I get a message, um, there's this net group send to notify. Uh, and then what I can do is I can determine based on what the message is, what, to, uh, what I want to happen in my application. So uh, a draw path was sent, meaning that someone uh, drew on the canvas, then create a new uh, draw event and send that over. Then to send events, I have a couple of convenience methods here. So to send a draw event, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking this draw path and then telling the net group to send that draw path to all of the neighbors in the group. Uh, and so uh, there's different APIs here on net group. You can send not just to all your neighbors, but to people next to you and, and uh, some different ways to communicate on, on the network. Uh, so that's my bus. That's how I'm actually communicating. Let's take a look at how this actually works in the applications. Here's my signature application. So you see that I have here this, this instance of that P2 Hancock bus. Uh, and then I've got this P2 Hancock display, which is the actual drawing surface. And what happens is, is there's a draw event on this, this P2 Hancock display, and I'm sending that draw path over the P2P network using that bus. Okay, so very simple. Then over in the desktop application where I'm doing the data capture, I have the, uh, also an instance of that P2 Hancock bus. And what I'm doing is I'm capturing that draw event and then, and then drawing those, that same path onto the drawing surface there. So really, uh, it's that easy. It's that easy to use the peer-to-peer -peer APIs in Adobe Air with Flex to create these applications which can communicate uh, with other devices uh, on, on the same network. Uh, and so really, really exciting, really interesting stuff here. You can find all the code for the, these examples as well as the code for Peter Pong up on my blog, jamesward.com. Thanks for watching.